This gentleman's got a transplant in his right iliac fossa and he's got a tight ureteric stricture which we've already tried once to cross uh, with an O1A hydrophilic wire unsuccessfully. So we've left the transplant to decompress for a week with an external nephrostomy in situ. Now what we're going to do is just to pacify the system and we're going to have a second go at getting through the stricture. Uh, so this cook locking pigtail catheter, it's best to release the locking mechanism just by cutting the catheter. Just going to cut it there and that will release the thread and now I can advance a guide wire through into the collecting system and this is just a soft tip Benson guide wire. We're just going to push right away into the collecting system and then we're going to exchange for a catheter. Just have to make sure you remove the thread as well and don't leave that. So I'm just inserting a, a Marriott Vanti 2 angle tip catheter over the Benson guide wire into the transplant. And this will allow me to steer a guide wire, uh, which in this case is this Benson wire, down the ureter. Injecting some contrast into the distal ureter near the area of the stricture, right at the stricture. And there's nothing going through, or very little going through at the moment, so it really is very, very tight. Okay, so this is the 016 Meister guide wire by Asahi, uh, which you can see has got a short angle tip on it and is said to have very good torqueability. And this is what we're going to try and use to cross this stricture. So I'm just going to flush the guide wire first. Now we're going to backload it into a two French prograde catheter. So we're just feeding it through the back end of the two French prograde. And we're just going to take it right the way to the end. And now we're going to put the torque device on. Okay, so this is the guide wire. You can see it's gone through several loops uh, with the catheter and I'm just going to protrude it out the end of the catheter and we're just going to check the torqueability. So if you watch when I rotate the torque device, we'll see how easily it talks at the end. And that really is pretty much one-to-one -one torqueability, which is, which is excellent. So we're just going to put one of these Flow 30 valves. It's a bit like a 2 borst onto the end of the catheter. This is also made by Merit. And this will allow me to get some grip on the micro catheter and stop it backing away as I'm advancing the guide wire. Pull the, pull the wire back slightly and that's it. So we're just advancing it into the catheter. And once I've got it in, I can tighten that valve up slightly to give a little bit more resistance. And I can adjust it to as much resistance as I like. Right, so now I'm just going to use the torque device and bounce the guide wire out to the end of the micro catheter and see if we can get through this stricture. I'm just going to try and advance the catheter into the end of that stricture. Right, let's take the wire out and we'll put a bit of contrast in. See if we can see a way through. So we're embedded right in the tip of that mm. stretcher there. So I'm going to take my supporting catheter down and try and get it right up against the stretcher. That's gone. Okay, so I'm just going to loosen the valve off slightly to allow me to advance the catheter some more and hopefully get it to follow that guide wire on towards the bladder. It really is incredibly tight. So, what I'm going to do is get more guide wire into the bladder. My catheter is backed away, so I'm going to get the catheter down there to give it more support. Okay, I'm just going to hold 
up there. Right, now we've got more support from the captain in the try and advance the micro captor, and that's gone. Straight into the bladder, so that really is very helpful. We're going to put lots of captor and lots of wire in the bladder, stretching now into the bladder, which is going to be very difficult because it's uh, even with the support of this wire, this is quite a large captor for that tight stretcher, and I think it's looped up in the kidney at the moment, so I'm just going to pull that loop back. There we go. And try and rotate it into the stretcher. So what we need to do now is withdraw both catheters uh, out over this guide wire so that we can insert a 9 thread sheath which is going to give us a lot more support and allow us to dilate the ureter and then put in an anti-grade stent. So we're just withdrawing the micro catheter, leaving the guide wire in situ. Now because I haven't used a long enough guide wire and I'm running out of room here whilst we're drawing the catheter, I'm just going to push the guide wire in using the back end of a VAT and fairly stiff wire and that will allow me to retain the wire here without it coming back as I pull my catheter out. There we go, okay, take the catheter off now. So that's just left, there we go, so that's left my Meister wire. We can take that, thank you. And now we can take out the 035 catheter and put in our sheath. Okay, so I'm now inserting a 9 French sheath over this 018 wire. Um, it's going a very short distance in the correct angle, just down, straight away down towards the PUJ. So a little bit of pushing now. give us a bit more support. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're wanting to dilate the ureteric stricture with over an 018 system, but we're just going to change this wire for a VA team, which is going to give us more support to do that. Okay, so that's the VA team guide wire in. Okay, so we're now advancing a three millimeter balloon by four centimeter over the um, VA team 018 guide wire through the sheath, and hopefully there'll be enough support to get this down into the stricture. going through the stretcher there into the bladder and I think we'll start our position there to dilate it. Okay so we're just going to start the dilatation of the ureter, three millimeter by four centimeter balloon and you can see there has been some extravasation of contrast there. I suspect that's leaked back around the sheet that we put in and the prostomy site. Pull the angioplasty balloon back slightly to that part and we're going to redilate. You can see there's a little bit of waste in that. So now I'm going to remove the angioplasty balloon over the 018 wire and I'm going to try and get an 035 catheter back in over that wire. Now we've dilated it to allow us to put an 035 guide wire in. So just, re just reinserting the five French catheter back over the 018 wire Hopefully this will go through the dilated ureter into the bladder. And it is tight. And with pulling back on the guide wire, that has actually gone into the bladder. Okay, we can now change for a stiff guide wire. I'm now going to insert an 035 Amplat Super Stiff Guide Wire, which will give us enough support, I hope, to place a stent. You will feel this in your bladder, okay? Now, pulling the catheter out over that guide wire. So this is a 7 French 26 centimeter ureter extent, double J stent or double pigtail stent. And we've got a long thread on the end which allow us to keep control of the proximal end of the stent and withdraw it if we advance it too far tend to use a fairly long stent in transplants because then they're easier to change cystoscopically. So this is the 7 French stent just going in over the stiff guide wire. Hopefully we'll get enough support and enough push to get this through the stricture and it's sailed through which is great. Now I'm just going to withdraw my guide wire partly to allow it to coil within the bladder. So I'm just going to withdraw my sheath slightly to allow the stent to coil at the top end. 
I'm now going to advance the stent. I'm pulling back the wire a little bit to give it some room to coil and some flexibility. I'm now going to push with the pusher. And you can see a lot of the stents go into the bladder, but that doesn't matter as long as it coils with the inspecting system. And there's the radio paper marker, and there it is coiled at the top. And that's the stent in situ. I'm now going to take the wire out, leaving the sheath in situ. Just going to snap the wire, snap the thread, and I'm going to pull the end with a knot on it, which you can just about see there, back through the top end of the stent which will not pull the stent back with it. That's the thread out. And now we can reinsert our guide wire and place an nephrostomy through this sheath. Now because this isn't a peel-away sheath, I'm going to have to take this out to put the nephrostomy in. If it was a peel-away sheath, I could have put my nephrostomy in and just peeled it away. But this gave us more support. So we're just going to withdraw that over the wire, take that off the wire, and then we can put a 7 French non-locking nephrostomy in, in place I'm just going to leave that clamped off temporarily in case the uretoke stent doesn't work. If the creatinine stays improved and he's passing good quantities of urine, then this nephrostomy can just be removed on the ward with traction. And because it's not a locking nephrostomy, there's very little chance it's going to dislodge the stent that we've put in place. So it's just a seven French pigtail nephrostomy. So I'm just going to push that into the collecting system, take the guide wire out, <coughs> And that's it done.